Hey everyone, Dan here. We are during market hours, actually just before power hour on Thursday, June 3rd. Today we're going to take a look at Workhorse. Before we get into it, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. And let's jump right in. So Workhorse, uh, I was trying to figure out what had happened because I have, uh, I've had a Workhorse position for quite a long time. And full disclosure, just a few minutes ago, so probably um, at about 2... 45 uh, this afternoon I took an additional position um, given this recent dip um, that we've seen. Um, so I was wondering what in the world happened because I actually thought Workhorse was a pretty cool company a while back which is why I initially took um, took a position but um, you know then it got beat down because it like didn't get this um, it was like a USPS bid or something like that some government bid didn't come through um, or was much smaller than expected and it got just absolutely crushed that's also where a lot of the shorts started to come in so we're gonna take a look at all this info but basically I was trying to figure out what in the world happened and you know basically it looks like folks finally just saw that it's one of the most shorted stocks or is the highest percentage of short float of float being shorted uh, currently. And so um, folks jumped on it. Now, to be honest, uh, Workhorse, because of the short interest has been on my radar for quite some time, I haven't made a video. And let's flip over the short data and talk about why. Um, so if you see here, Workhorse has held this top spot uh, ever since PubM got, um, I guess, dethroned, <laughs> if you want to think of this in a positive way of sorts. But um, you know, it now occupies this top spot. Over 40% of the uh, float is shorted currently. You know, they're year to date, they're down quite significantly, um, but obviously making a big run today. Um, I think as folks are starting to understand and, and digest and research this short data info for themselves because of all the noise that's been made about it recently, I think we'll see a lot more of these kind of play out um, in, in the future. So it's interesting to see. But so this has been on my radar for a while. The reason that I didn't call it out, and if you've watched any of my other short videos, you'll understand this, the fee is very, very low. <clears throat> the fee is, you know, nearly, I mean, t in my opinion, nearly zero, you know, it's just here at three. And, you know, ever since it started to be so heavily shorted, that fee has just been teeny tiny. And so as you may know, from my other videos, one of the key components that I look for for potential short squeeze is for that fee to rocket up. Um, you know, you see it, it can get very, very high, um, well over 100% at this point. Um, but this was, you know, way back um, in 2020. And so because the fee was low, I kind of felt like, yeah, there is huge um, percentage of the float being shorted, but you know these folks don't have a lot of incentive to close their position quickly or in mass because the fee is very low and workhorse has generally been getting beaten down pretty badly. Um, potentially what I wasn't accounting for is the thing that I just mentioned where a lot of folks are starting to digest and understand this information and are starting to act on it. And so them not seeing the fee being high maybe either like they don't care or they didn't even notice that piece of the puzzle and they're just more or less going off of you know it being the number one spot right now um, and that's causing retail to pour in pump the price up and then certainly um, will cause a bunch of those shares to feel like they need to close even though the borrow rates very low to be so upside down in a position um, will put a lot of pressure on them now, the other thing to look at is to try to sort of figure out what's even happening today. So these are 15-minute timestamps. So let's see what's happened with the big run up today. Um, <clears throat> you know, you can see exactly what happened. So at close yesterday, there was 400,000 shares available to borrow in short sell. And, and then it had this huge run up, and then immediately... Someone or some ones came in and said, hey, I'll take 370,000 of those off of your hands and I'll short sell them out. And then you see the price came down and let's see on the chart what happened around 10, 10, 30 today. So around 10, 10, 30, we're right around here. You know, so potentially some folks started to feel like the price was stabilizing and wanted to close out positions um, or the whole swing of things just kind of like 
jarred them a bit because um, you see 230,000 came back into the available pool. Now this is just from one brokerage. This is from, um, oh, what's the name? Uh, interactive brokers. Um, so, you know, this doesn't account for all of them out there, but this gives you a snapshot or a picture of probably a very similar situation that you're seeing in other brokerages. There's not really a great reason why it would be wildly different. Um, the dark pools, you know, I, I don't have insight into the dark pools, but this is sort of like what I would look at, um, you know, to just sort of like get a, a, a gauge of what's happening. So a lot of jumping in at open and then um, some people, maybe they were quickly just locking in quick short profits. I don't know, but some folks definitely <clears throat> uh, close their positions around 1030. And then that's basically been holding true. And then recently here, somebody just borrowed 50 K to short, um, you know, and I think that that's probably initially what we'll see, to be honest. Um, a lot of times these squeezes take so long to play out because for a short seller, borrowing shares at a higher price is actually the way that they kind of average down. If you think of like people who typically go long um, and, you know, they buy something at $15 and then it dips down to 14 so they buy additional shares and that averages, the, you know, their cost basis comes down. Um, the equivalent to that on the short side of things is they borrow shares that are now $15 um, instead of shares that they were borrowing before that were $10. Um, and, and that then, you know, if they bought an equal amount would bring them to $12.50, not accounting for the fee that they've been incurring on the initial 10, of course. But, um, but I think that that sort of what I'm trying to get at is I think that we'll see a lot more shorts come into play on Till they realize that the price is not going to be driven down significantly enough to get them out from under their upside down positions. And once that happens, then I think the, the squeeze could kick off. But the price first is, is going to have to prove that it can stay where it is and continue to have green days uh, in the future. The ratio here, we saw yesterday a little bit pulling back into the lower 20s as opposed to the mid to high 20s, but this has basically been um, in this range of 20s for quite some time, so no pulling back, um, and again, I think that we'll see probably a higher short volume ratio than this when um, today's data comes out, which w which will be later tonight. So I'll send a tweet out about that when it happens. You see the dollar volume sold short has come down here recently, but that's because the price has, or primarily because the price has been um, so beat down. So the dollar value, of course, is coming down. You do see a big increase from last month in short positions. And if we take a look here, there was this huge dumping of short positions, or I guess we could say closing of short positions in February and January. Um, but I mean, look where the price was, 24, 33, 37. So we see we have some sort of like potential targets here to look at to say, okay, if retail can drive these prices into this range, this is historically speaking, where you saw big changes in, in shorts closing positions. Um, and then what did they do? They jumped in and started rapidly increasing short positions again in late February. And the price at that point was just 18 bucks. But you see a bunch came in. Um, the days to cover have been going up. Um, you know, a bunch of these folks, uh, got, got a 748, um, uh, price point on their borrowed shares. And so, I mean, the fact that it's double that now they're owing they're you know, they would have to buy back at double the price that they, uh, were lent those shares at plus incur the fee, even though it's small, but I mean, not an enviable position, that's for sure. So that's the data as I see it. And again, the only reason that I didn't call it out in a previous video, even though I've been watching it for a long time, was the fee. But, you know, in this case, like I said, maybe some of these factors are changing and they don't necessarily play as big of a role uh, moving forward. But that's sort of like TBD. On the one minute chart, here's basically why I just took a position. Um, not only because of everything I just said <laughs> about the short data, um, which I think act like everything looks really good in the short data, except for that fee. But like I said, it may not matter anymore. 
Um, but this is essentially going to be wedging out toward close, you know, maybe sooner. Um, but, you know, these series of, of higher lows um, sort of gave me some confidence and I thought, okay, it's, it could be a good opportunity to, to go ahead and um, re-enter. The other position that I referenced before that I have in, in Workhorse, uh, I was wheeling that. So I sold puts to take the position. Eventually I got assigned and now I've been selling covered calls on it. Um, but that was always my plan was to wheel um workhorse for a while and that started i think in 2020 but um but otherwise the one that i took today was just straight straight up bought long shares and so we'll see how that goes but um additionally you know looking at places where we should look for support and resistance you know there should be quite a bit of support here because of this support area um some resistance here some support here uh, some resistance there. So you see a bunch of support and resistance along the way. So that should be a pretty solid line for us to hang on to. And then, you know, here, all this topping out, um, you know, I would look to see what it can do to get itself back over 15 or if it kind of gets stuck there again. And this will be a pretty tough level to the upper 15s because of this previous support pre turn to resistance here. Um, but you know, that would obviously get it well out of the wedge at that point and, um, you know, see what, what could be happening after that. But those would be my initial areas to look for. If it does drop down further, um, you know, I would really expect, uh, if not a catch, you know, a big fight at 14, I, I would think it'd have a, some resistance, uh, getting pushed below. And then even even then in the high 13s, I think there will be additional effort uh, to pull in support at that point. So that's what I'll be looking for from price zones and targets for potential bounces and that sort of thing. And then, you know, the MAs are kind of curling up here. So I'll be interested to see how they start to unravel. If we can get this bullish cross from the 20 crossing above the 200 and um, and then crossing over the 50, you know, that could give a lot of momentum to come up. And on the RSI, you know, we're mid-range right now, so nothing preventing this sort of like uh, midday or I guess most of the day consolidation to um, nothing preventing that from sort of allowing us a big bump up. On the MACD, starting to get some bullish momentum in as you see this little little run here. But we've had several of these little runs that have just kind of petered out. Um, so I think that the next most important thing is that we don't make a lower low, um, which which has been being avoided, which would mean you know not dropping below this area here. I would like to see it get caught and like get a pretty strong bounce off of that box if it needs it. So if not, it's going to be tougher to keep the bullish momentum high enough um, in order to put pressure on those shorts to squeeze. But again, I think the squeeze would be several, several days away, to be honest. I think that retail is going to have to prove in this case that they can show up to kick things off, and then they can keep showing up to keep that pressure high, especially in a low fee stock. Um, you know, but there there's so much out there um, as a percentage of the float that yes, there's definitely a lot of opportunity here, but it's this more so than even some of the other ones, because the fee is low, it's going to require um, some longevity and some longer term focus from the retail traders. So we'll see if they can provide that or not. Um, the other thing I would look for is to sort of see if this consolidation channel can get broken before close. That would be really nice to see as well. But it's a lot to ask. But you know, if retail is here, they're here. If they're not, then they're not. So it's time to kind of show up or just kind of let this one fizzle out. All right. Well, I hope that this was interesting to some of you. Um, I hope that, you know, if you got into workhorse today or if you're thinking about it, you know, good luck in your position or future positions. And I will see you all in the next video.